In this video, we are going to build off what we were doing with digital color in our last video to create this composition. Along the way, we're going to use some different tools, specifically the live paint bucket, which has some really interesting options. But before we can color this, we need to create the artwork. Let me give you a quick preview of what it's going to look like. This is how we start this exercise. But don't worry, we've already utilized all the tools necessary in order to create this shape. What I'd like you to do is come to the file drop down menu and select new. Again, I want to work with eight and a half by 11 using the landscape setting and under advanced options, I'm going to make sure that I'm working with CMYK color mode and I'm going to say create. The first thing I'm going to do is create the composition window. You can see my artboard here, but I'm going to create my composition just slightly smaller than my artboard. I'm going to come over to my toolbox and choose my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag a rectangle that fits into my artboard like that. We're not going to worry about color just yet, but I am going to make one change to my default appearance here. Again, this rectangle has a white fill and a black stroke. But for my purposes, I would like to get rid of the white fill. I'm going to open up my color panel, bring my color indicator forward, and set that to none. Now as I move forward, all the shapes that I create will not have any color fill inside of them. Let's start. Let's start with the elements inside of our composition, and the first one is going to be our tabletop. I'm going to again come over to my rectangle tool, and inside of my composition, roughly like so, I'm going to create a tabletop. But if I come back to my sample, you can see that my tabletop has a little bit of an angle to it, a bit of a skew, what Illustrator calls a shear. Let's create that shear in this table. So I'm going to come over to my toolbox, and if I click and hold on my scale tool, I'll reveal the shear tool. You can see the shear tools cursor looks like a crosshairs. And if I was just to click someplace and start dragging, you can see how that deforms my shape. But of course, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm going to press Command Z to undo that. In order to control this shear a little bit better, I'm going to hold down my shift button while clicking and dragging with my cursor. You can see that my tabletop now starts to angle the way that I want it. Let's come back to my sample illustration. The next shape that I want to create is the guitar. The guitar is made up of five shapes, three ellipses, and two rectangles. To create those, I'm actually going to work a little bit off to the side here. I'm going to come to the View drop-down menu and hide my artboard so I don't have to see those lines. To start my guitar, I'm going to come over to my Geometric Shapes tools and choose my Ellipse tool. I'm going to click and drag, not a perfect circle, but an ellipse like that. That'll be the top of my guitar. Let's create the bottom of the guitar, essentially the same shape, but a little bit larger. Now, I should mention that the inspiration for this artwork is George Brock. George Brock was, along with Picasso, the originator of cubism, essentially breaking down forms to fundamental geometries and breaking up the picture plane in segments. With that in mind, if George Brock is my inspiration, fidelity to reality is not really that important. I'm going to give that guitar a bit of a skew like that. I'm also going to zoom into my artwork by pressing command plus sign so I can see this a little bit better. The next shape that I want to create is the neck of the guitar. Again, I'm going to come over to my toolbox and click on my ellipse tool. This time I want to work with my rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a long, narrow rectangle like that. In the sample illustration, though, you'll notice that the guitar has a little bit of a taper to it. I know that I can adjust the shape of this if I come along to my toolbox and choose my direct selection arrow. With the direct selection arrow, I can click on individual anchor points of this shape. And I'm just going to reshape this neck of the guitar just a little bit, kind of like that. Let's create one more rectangle for the head of the guitar. And again, I'm going to come to my white arrow and adjust the shape. The last shape I need to create for the guitar is the ellipse tool for the sound hole. And I'm going to just do that with the ellipse tool like that. Remember, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Don't worry if it doesn't look quite like what I have. Remember, cubism in modern art is our inspiration. Now, these five shapes that are currently making up my guitar are all separate shapes at the moment. But let's group them all together so that when I move this into my composition, I won't leave any pieces behind. With my black arrow, I'm just going to drag a marquee around these shapes, and from the object drop-down menu, I'm going to select Group. I'm going to press my space bar to reveal my hand tool, and I'm going to pan that back into my view. And now I'm going to take my guitar and drag it over my tabletop like that. 
in the sample illustration, this guitar was slightly angled. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take my cursor, hover over the top right bounding box and until I get those double-headed arrows, and I'm just going to click and drag so I can rotate that guitar like that. I can also see that my guitar needs to be a little bit larger in my composition than it currently is. I'm going to drag, click, and drag, and hold the shift button down as I drag that guitar like so. The next shapes that I want to create are the oranges here. For my oranges, I have a grouping of three, two of which overlap, and one that's on its own. As a grouping, this is better than having three individual oranges not overlapping. Let's come back here, and I'm going to use my ellipse tool to create these shapes. Holding down my shift button, I can create a perfect circle. I'm going to create another perfect circle here, and I want to have these two overlap. The final shape that I need to make is this jug shape here. Now I can create this shape using either one of two different tools. I'll let you decide which one you want to work with. We've worked with both of these already. The first way I'm going to do it is with the pen tool. If I click on the pen tool, I'm just going to draw freeform this jug. The way I'm going to start is I'm going to click once for the, the spout of this jug, roughly here. Remember how this works. This is a straight line anchor, and I can tell that because of the straight line that's being previewed right now. But remember, to create curves, I just need to click, hold, and drag in a certain direction to drag out these handles. And when I do, I create a curved line segment. I'm just going to drag this down just a little bit so I can create the curve underneath the spout of the jug. I'm going to take my pen tool and I'm going to click on that last anchor point to convert it from a smooth line anchor point to a straight line anchor point. Remember, this allows us to control how the curves happen. I'm just going to click and drag a subtle curve like that. Again, I'm going to click on that last anchor point to convert it. I'm going to move around the belly of my jug like this. I'm going to click at the bottom of my jug and click and drag around to create the bottom of my jug. Remember, in our sample illustration, the jug has a handle. So as I come around here, I'm going to click and drag like that so that I can click on that last anchor point and jut out this way to create the handle shape. Again, I'm going to click on that last anchor point to convert it to a straight line anchor. Finally, I'm going to finish this shape by clicking on that very first anchor point and dragging down and to the left like that. The only thing I'm missing is the space here in the handle, like so. Almost done. I'm going to create one last line, not a shape, that'll define the opening at the top of this jug, like so. If I need to make any changes to these lines, remember, I can always come back over here to the direct selection white arrow. And if I click on any one of these anchor points or handles with that white arrow, I can adjust these shapes just like we did with the Coke logo. If that seems too hard, remember, we can also create this shape using the pencil tool. Now, the pencil tool isn't quite as precise, but precision isn't really necessary here. I'm going to select this jug, and I'm just going to move it off to the side here. Let's do this shape one more time. This time, I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to click on the pencil tool. Now, the pencil tool works by just clicking and dragging with your mouse, but it's sometimes hard to do this with the mouse. I have a Wacom drawing tablet, which is just like drawing with a pencil. So when I actually do draw with this pencil tool, you can see that it might be a little bit easier for me to do this than if you're using a mouse. The real key here is that we just want to create a nice, simple shape that we can color later. Now, this line that defines the lip of the jug, don't worry that it extends beyond the lines here. When we color this later, that won't matter. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, go Command minus sign. I don't need this first jug. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of it, select it get rid of that. Now, in fact, we're almost done here in creating the lines that we need, but I do need to make a couple of small changes. Currently, the jug is a little bit small in relation to the rest of my composition. I'm going to use my black arrow to drag around the top part of that jug. Careful not to accidentally select the table. And when, when I have those parts selected, I can use my bounding box to resize this. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger so that we have a little bit of overlap between the guitar and the jug. I'm going to come back to my sample illustration, and you'll notice that this composition is segmented using these horizontal and vertical line dividers, as we see here. These are the last things that we are going to be putting into our composition. I'm going to come back here to this, hit Command-0 to put that into my field of view. I'm going to come back over to my toolbox, and I'm going to click once on this line segment tool. The line segment tool works by clicking and dragging a line. I'm going to drag out two slightly horizontal dividing lines. 
and two slightly slanted vertical dividing lines. I'll let you decide where in your composition you want those to intersect. Now I'm almost done. The last thing I'm going to do, you don't necessarily have to do this. I'm just going to take my composition bounding box window and I'm just going to make that just a little bit smaller so it fits around my elements a little bit better. We've now created the line work for our illustration. What we need to do now is take all these elements and create what's called a live paint group. And how we do that is, first of all, we have to select all the elements that we want to color. What I recommend is you use your black selection arrow and just drag a marquee selection around all your visual elements. Make sure that everything is selected though. Don't leave any unselected parts off to the side. Once you have all those elements selected, I want you to come back to your toolbox. And if you recall, we've worked with this shape builder tool in the past, but if I click and hold on that shape builder tool, it reveals a couple of other tools. One of them is called the live paint bucket. I'm gonna select the live paint bucket. And you can see something happens. As soon as I put that cursor over top of my selected artwork, I get this message. It says, click to make live paint group. I'm just gonna click once. What's happened is that all of these graphical forms have been turned into what's called a live paint group. Illustrator is now able to discern the intersections of those shapes. In our next video, we are going to begin the process of coloring this composition.